Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be all about my recent trip to Scotland and the fun we had. This was such an amazing trip filled with stunning views, twisty roads, new friends, questionable food, and even some motorcycles. So let's jump right in. Our trip begins in Inverness as we planned to see as much of Scotland as we could by driving. This was to be a full 11 days so we planned our route to see as much as possible. From the airport, we picked up a rental car which is a Ford Focus per my request and immediately navigated a few roundabouts before making our way into Inverness for late lunch. Afterwards, we drove to our destination for the night, which was the Glenmore Hotel right on the river. By late the next morning, we had had a few wake-up calls. First, the smoke alarm going off at the Glenmore Hotel is a common occurrence and really no big deal. Second, you must make dinner reservations in advance. And lastly, we can't get coffee until at least 9 a.m which we'll be filing a formal complaint about. The coffee industry here actually took some getting used to as Amber and I are big coffee drinkers and a big part of our routines. Again, complaints filed. After exchanging some cash and buying a beanie with Scotland on it, we hit the road and were soon at our first stop called Clavicanes, which was an ancient burial and worship site. This site dates back 4,000 years and is comprised of three surviving canes as well as other partial remains. It was very cool in its design and alignment with the sun at various points of the year, and it was first excavated in 1828 with later excavations continuing all the way up into the 1990s. Leaving there, our next destination was the Isle of Skye, where we would spend the next few days. Getting there, we drove along Loch Ness and of course stopped to take some photos and take in the beauty. We looked but never found Bigfoot, but this giant sea serpent thing pointed us in the right direction. Very quickly, the drive became spectacular with mountain views, many turns, and even the weather constantly shifting between sun and rain. The weather shifting would be a theme for the rest of the trip as we would find. The perfect twisty roads here. Even before we left, we knew that we would be stopping a lot as there would be so much to see. Our next stop that day was at Urquhart Castle, which at this point was mere ruins from the many generations of capture and inhabitants. Walking castle ruins on the banks of Loch Ness basically earned us our I went to Scotland t-shirt. One of my favorite things here were the carved names and dates in the castle walls from the various people that lived here over the course of a thousand years. The museum and presentation were really cool and we definitely recommend stopping here. Tourists. <laughs> Getting back on the road, we crossed the bridge over to Skye and were soon in our Airbnb in Scon Scons Sconser. Sconser? Sconser. We chose this place for the view and the placement between two other towns giving us many options for food and such. You know when uh, you look on Airbnb and sometimes like the pictures are way better than what you actually get in yeah, real life? absolutely. That's happened to me before. Is that the case here? Absolutely not. Good 
good, not false advertising, we'll say that. <laughs> Our view from the living room was of the water in the island of Rasse, where some choice whiskey is made from what I hear. There was even a ferry that passed right in front of us, which was cool to watch. The next morning we made our way into the town of Portree, which is about 15 minutes north of where we were staying. Portree was really cool and we ended up visiting here quite a bit as it felt like a hub for the island as most of the roads came together here. As we stopped for breakfast, the snow started coming down, which was a bit concerning as our main plan for that morning was a big hike. After some breakfast and narrowly avoiding a parking ticket, we drove to the trailhead for Old Man's Store. I'll let the next clips describe how that went. It was definitely a real adventure. If you can't handle me in my bundle uppies, then you don't deserve me in my skin for downies. <laughs> it's rather cold out here. All right, we are about to go that way. Everyone loves a slinky, you gotta get a slinky, go, slinky, go! down. We did not perish. I don't know any back the sun is starting to come out. It's gorgeous. Done with our adventure and back at sea level, we slowly made our way around the upper half of the island with absolutely breathtaking views. Although I tried my best, the footage I got on this trip ultimately does this country no justice. It's just spectacular. We finally found them. The landscape was full of rivers, creeks, mountains, rolling hills, cliffs, coastline, small villages, sheep, and again, constant weather shift. It seemed like a constant shift between sun and snow. We followed the A855 all the way until it turned into the A87 and then stopped back in Portree for a nice beer and some snacks before heading back to the Airbnb for the night.
That night, though, the snow kept coming. We were told it doesn't stick at the coast and wouldn't accumulate, but the next morning, there was at least five inches of snow on the ground, which both added to the beauty as well as the difficulty of getting the car up the small hill that was the driveway. A bit of grit and some friendly pushes, and we were on our way back to Portree for coffee before our next planned hike. There's a little bit of snow in the hood right now. It was on the roof of the car. We made it out of our little Airbnb, but got on the road. Terrible visibility. The car slows down in front of us. All that snow and up here. Zero visibility. <laughs> The main roads were fine to drive on, but the smaller secondary roads hadn't been cleared. We almost got stuck multiple times trying to get to the trailhead, but eventually had to turn around as it was just inaccessible. Well, we got down the road hill. Again, we're trying to hike that mountain over there. But we couldn't get to the actual mountain because the roads had not been cleared at all. So here is a local probably telling BJ what a poor decision that we made. <laughs> Um, he is trying to figure out if we can get back up the hill. So, who knows? We might be hiking back to the Airbnb. We figured another nearby hike would be much easier, or so we thought. It started out beautiful with a walk through the trees and into a nice open trail with everything blanketed in snow. The views were amazing and you could really see Portree in the harbor from this spot. You could also see the weather front slowly making its way towards us in the distance. The rest of the hike went downhill quick, ah, jokes. The path led down the hill and eventually across the road to a trail that ran alongside a river, which then ran into the ocean. The river was beautiful, but eventually turned into sort of like a mushy bog that was always in between tides. At this point, we could really see the front approaching and picked up the pace. Oh. Well, we're flashbacks to yesterday. We weren't able to get to the car in time, and the snow came in fierce and made for a difficult last half mile. Once back to the car, we grabbed a few groceries before heading back to Skosner to warm up. Our plan was to leave Sky the next day. Apparently this doesn't happen often, so uh, yeah, I, a little distraught. That, that last part of the hike got a little sketch, not gonna lie. The next morning we got up extra early and headed north to do a simple drive around the northwest of Skye before heading back into the mainland. The sunrise views were just spectacular. The roads were empty of cars, but unfortunately full of massive potholes. I couldn't avoid one of them and dropped a wheel into it head on. After a few minutes I could see the pressure dropping and now I was starting to worry. Oh my god, a flat tire. Potholes, man. They're bad here. So the potholes are not are that great. Are you serious? got an anti-theft one on it. We pulled off at the next crossroads, which happened to be in lawnmower to change the tire, but after a quick Google search, we noticed we were just feet from the only automotive garage in 20 miles, and they were scheduled to be open soon. After a short wait, the employees arrived to open the shop and were beyond accommodating as they got us right in. Shout out to Kenny's Garage for getting the car in here, repairing the flat. We actually bent the rim on this thing. Not surprising, and there was another person here. Video. Yeah, if they do, you guys weren't helpful, but yeah, anyway, we're good to go. Our journey continues, and uh, yeah, another person had the same issue as us. These mm -hmm. potholes, man. So, they got you fixed up too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, All right, let's get going. Back on the road with lost time, we tried to push to our lighthouse destination, but the roads were still too snow-packed to risk getting stuck. We turned around and headed back for the mainland, but not before getting slowed down by a bunch of sheep in the road. Oh, that one is <laughs> me mugging us so hard. Hey guy, get out of the way. She wants to pet the sheep so bad. <laughs> hey. 
After all of our delays with our flat tire, the snowy roads, and then of course the sheep, we were finally on our way back to the mainland and then it was on to Fort William where we were planned to stay for the night. We did however make a quick stop at the Eileen Doran Castle for lunch and continued on to Fort William. Now, we didn't have any major plans for this place, but we did end up getting settled at our Airbnb real quick before making our way to the Glenfinn Viaduct for a short hike and, of course, the views. It was a very cool spot, and, uh, of course, if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's kind of a must-see destination. It's really beautiful. On a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think? It's a, it's a solid 10. Solid 10 points to Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> After the viaduct, we headed back to Fort William for some dinner and then just to go ahead and go to sleep because we didn't really have any plans for Fort William itself. And the next day was going to be a big one, so we were really excited about it. The next day, our plans were to leave Fort William and do a hike along our route to Calendar where we were to meet up with some friends. We stopped for coffee at a cool cafe in Glencoe and then our drive took us into Stunning Mountains for our hike. The plan was to hike a popular trail on Google Antiv, which is said to have amazing views but be pretty steep right from the start. Expecting just that, we got going and followed the small trail from the parking area into the valley. Seeing only a single path and some hikers ahead, we simply followed suit. While beautiful, the trail never started going uphill and just ran alongside the creek. After over an hour of following this path, we checked the map and sure enough, we missed the main trail which was very early on. Feeling a bit silly but still motivated, we just kept going along the trail and eventually came to a high point just before it was turned and run back down the hill on the other side of the mountain. The views were amazing as you see here, but my drone was having a hell of a time fighting against this wind. Overall though, we still enjoyed this one and eventually made our way back to the car to continue our journey. Back in the car to warm up, we started on our way to Calendar. The drive was beautiful with a mix of very open scenery, followed by twisty roads along with hills and locks. We even passed some cool ski resorts which were almost strange to see from a flat perspective. After a quick stop for lunch, we arrived in Calendar and got checked into our Airbnb. The excitement was building as we got ready to go and finally meet some friends that we have only known online for the last couple years. Our destination was THE Shugly Shed, where Ewan makes his videos from. You want to use the As the stars aligned, we also had many other faces, including Strewn from Re-Motorcycled, Al of Kilted Bushido Builds, Yaron from Dutch Shed Builds, and our friends Jono and Gary, who were there to hang out as well as assist with the upcoming show. We had full intentions of doing like a YouTube or Instagram live session here, but being in the moment and just in awe that we were all in the same place at the same time, we simply kept the cameras away except for a few minutes to have evidence that it even happened at all. Here's some of that footage and just overall amazing atmosphere. Maybe. <laughs> Two, three. The calling. You're late, mate. Do we have to do this? <laughs> oh, what a comment to what a comment to open with. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really want. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Explain yourself. Ah, hi, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Gary over there is keeping me right. <laughs> What's my terminology? Yeah. Another thing in the Netherlands. What? Oh, Thursday is like when everybody goes out of drinking. Hello. What are we Hello. up to, guys? We're just admiring Ewan's new whip. Yeah, we're just talking about what's, what Hemi to put in it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's got to be a Hemi if it's Dodge. In the back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can't have anything Scottish on here. <laughs> yeah. Well, apart from the massive Scotland flag he's going to put on here. Well, I don't know if we can have that. This is a Dodge. We're hanging out with Strewn. Euron. Morning. At, there's the actual Sugarly Shed. Yeah. Oh. Flip. Bacon pancakes, bacon, bacon pancakes. There's no bacon. Yes, the bacon. Bacon pancakes. <laughs>
Sugar Ray Peace Pump. I seriously can't believe it all came together and that I got to throw a hug on so many great people. After a while though, Amber and I had to hit the road as our next stop was the Wallace Monument. This is very cool to see, but consider this your warning as there are a lot of stairs. You end up climbing about six stories or more, all via a narrow spiral staircase. It can actually be very disorienting, but still very worth the effort to get the view of Sterling and the area where the Battle of Sterling Bridge took place. Speaking of bridges, here are some just outside of Sterling we got to see as I got twisted around as I missed my exit. Back on the road we finally made it to Edinburgh and soon we arrived at our Airbnb where we would spend the next few days. Edinburgh was very cool and we covered everything we wanted to see by foot alone. Where we picked to stay meant we were close to all the major spots to see. Our first day we started out with the National Museum of Scotland which we spent a few hours in. You could easily spend an entire day here to see everything, so we had to be strategic on what we focused on. The museum was free to enter, which was also very awesome. Check out some of these cool pieces of the collection. For the next two days, we spent our time walking the Royal Mile, exploring small shops, searching for that perfect cafe, and eating all the things because vacation calories don't count. An obvious destination was Edinburgh Castle, which looks very imposing as it sits on top of an inactive volcano. Getting to walk around inside was great, and like everything in Scotland, just full of history. Despite being around the castle for a full three days, we still somehow never heard the one o'clock gun, which has some very interesting historical significance. We did, however, finally get to hear some bagpipes in person, which meant we had completed the full Scottish experience. Note the red sticker placement. Tag me if you ever spot it. Another fun spot we visited was the Camera Obscura World of Illusions attraction near the castle. I could spend all day at places like this that mess with your senses. If you're in Edinburgh and it's raining outside, this is a great option to spend an hour at. I look really good with a beard. Yeah, I think it's a look. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sunday was all about the Scottish Motorcycle Show and getting to visit with more friends. Upon arrival, we were immediately greeted by a viewer named Steve, who was very kind and fun to chat with, so shout out to him for the warm welcome. We then made our way over to the NWT Cyclotronic booth, where our friends were stationed at. Al, Gary, and Euron were holding down the fort while Jonathan Hull and Ewan were both talking with showgoers about their custom bikes they had brought. I can't talk highly enough about both of these beautiful bikes and their creators. Jonathan's bike is this stunning 1981 Dual Over Cam CB750 in a kind of classic cafe theme, sporting many custom touches like a previous generation super sport tank and an absolutely drool worthy pistachio green hue. Ewan's bike is called Mushashi and is a Yamaha VMAX he has created with inspiration drawing from a samurai warrior. He has a ton of detail on this bike, and the build is fully documented on his channel. I'll have a link in the description, so please go check his videos out. Amber and I were able to walk around the show for a bit, and it was cool getting to see the similarities, but also the differences in the custom motorcycle scene between the US and like UK or Europe. One example would be the patriotic themed builds, full of flags and such. The styles are absolutely identical, but the flags are the only variant. One difference I did expect were the large majority of small CC bikes, such as this rad custom Honda MBX80. These small boomerang comm stars are to die for. There were lots of race bikes that I was drooling over, but also some stunning customs like this 900F, and of course the line of insane GSX builds from old school Suzuki. 
I feel I'd fit right in over here. Walking back to the NWT booth, I ran into a very cool and kind guy named Joe, who asked me to sign his book, How to Build a Motorcycle. It turns out that he's been going to shows, gathering signatures from people that inspire him as he begins to build his own custom Kawasaki GPZ. This is a great honor for me, and just a reminder on how great the motorcycle community can be. I just wanted to give a special thanks to Joe and wish him the best going forward. It's important to support each other, so we all rise together. As the show wound down and was nearing 4 p.m., it was coming time to say our goodbyes. Getting to meet Alan, Yaron, Strun, Jono, Gary, Jonathan, Ewan, John, and many more were the highlight of my life, and something that really charged the batteries. I could have spent a week with each of them chatting about all things life, and it wouldn't have been enough. It's still hard to believe that we all got to be in the same place at the same time, but through good fortune and a lot of luck, it absolutely did. I'm very grateful for the good people in my life. Eventually, we did finally wrap up with hugs and farewell bids and headed back to the city center. This was our last event planned for Scotland, and definitely a high note to end on. Overall, our trip was full Spinal Tap, being an 11 out of 10, and something Amber and I will remember forever. We got to see stunning coastline, mountains, rivers, and waterfalls. We got to hike multiple times, but seemingly always in the snow. I got to enjoy the simple pleasure of a fun manual car on twisty roads. We ate lots of delicious foods, drank lots of coffee, and pet many doggos. We got to explore a historic city by foot, and just be in the atmosphere of a place with endless stories to tell. Every single person we met was beyond kind, and the best hospitality was the only thing we ever experienced. We can't recommend visiting Scotland enough, as it's a very welcoming place with a wide variety of things to see. Just packed for all four seasons that you will be experiencing by the hour.